The exam might say, discuss biological treatments for depression, 8 and 16 marks. And if they do this, then they're asking for two things, um, psychiatric drugs, antidepressants, and ECT. If it was me, I would split the essay into two separate sections. The first section I would outline and then evaluate the antidepressant drugs. And then for the second part of the essay, I would outline and evaluate ECT. So the psychoactive drugs are antidepressants, and we need to look at two types. Tricyclics, which is abbreviated to TCAs, and selective serotonin reuptake inhibitors, which we abbreviate to SSRIs. Tricyclics um, are the older form of antidepressants. All antidepressants are used to uh, alleviate the symptoms of depression. And the tricyclics work by um, blocking the reuptake of the neurotransmitters, noradrenaline and serotonin. So, as I tell you all the time, I'm not a biologist, but you've got the presynaptic cell, uh, the presynaptic neuron at the top, and the postsynaptic neuron at the bottom, and between them is something called the synapse, or sometimes called the synaptic gap, or the synaptic cleft. And the neurotransmitters, so the noradrenaline is a neurotransmitter, and it needs to go from the top of the neuron down to the bottom, across the synapse, across the synaptic gap. And the way I always think about it is how one of my students, you know who you are, um, kind of describes it as going zzz. So it kind of has to go zzz, right from the top down to the bottom. So the neurotransmitter noradrenaline comes down from the top to the bottom and you get it in the, synapti in the synapse, the synaptic gap. And the receptors on the postsynaptic cell are going, great, let's have some of that. And they get it and it increases the nerve impulses or it causes that. So tricyclics stop the reabsorption of the noradrenaline. And what that means is that naturally, in everybody, hopefully, the noradrenaline that comes down, but naturally some of it reabsorbs back up to the presynaptic cell. And so the tricyclics, the TCAs, they block that reabsorption. So you've got more noradrenaline. And not only does it block the um, noradrenaline going back up, but it also blocks the serotonin going back up. So you've got, so on this picture, you'll, you'll see there are two um, synapses, the noradrenaline one and the serotonin one, and the tricyclics work to block the reuptake of both of those neurotransmitters. Then you've got the selective serotonin reuptake inhibitors, and these are the newer forms. Um, you've probably heard of ones like Prozac and Siroxat, they're very well known. And they work in kind of the same way, but they just block the reuptake of the serotonin because they're called selective serotonin reuptake inhibitors. Um, so they, they block that. So you end up with increased serotonin in the synapse and the receptors can get more of it, which um, causes, apparently, a happier feeling. Um, and they're very, very, very popular. So th those are your AO1s for the psychoactive drugs and then we need to evaluate it and of course we need double the evaluation to the to the outline so the first piece of evidence is from Arol et al um, and they look at the effectiveness of antidepressants over placebos now you all know that a placebo is a fake drug probably like a sugar pill something like that has no physiological effect at all so he looked at whether the um, what's it called the uh, actual antidepressants were um, whether they were effective compared to placebos and he conducted a meta-analysis of 15 studies found that both TCAs and SSRIs um, were more effective in the treatment of people with depression in primary care that means like GP surgeries um, the percentages like about 56 to 60 percent of people reacted uh, positively to the actual drugs whereas only 42 to 47% of people reacted to the placebos. So Arol gives us evidence for the effectiveness of the drug therapy. However, Kirsch et al, 2008, they reviewed clinical trials of SSRIs and found that they were only really effective in people with severe depression. And what they think is that the people with moderate depression took a placebo and because they were moderately depressed, um, the placebo the placebo gave them hope 
that, that it would work and that they would feel better. And so the placebos were actually effective for those people. But those people who had severe depression, it didn't work. Um, the placebos didn't work for them. Perhaps they had such little expectations of actually getting better that um, the placebo had no effect and it was only the real drugs that actually demonstrated any kind of effect. So Kirsch says that uh, it's the severity of the symptoms that is important in whether you use drug therapy or not. Uh, another evaluation point is from Geller et al who did double blind studies um, and found that antidepressants consistently failed to demonstrate the superior the superiority of antidepressant medications over placebo conditions um, in children and adolescents. So they're saying, so Geller is saying that antidepressants are not appropriate for use in children and adolescents. And Ryan 1992 suggests maybe it's because of their developing neurochemistry, um, which means that there's a difference in their brain chemistry. And that's why. And then our Final evaluation point for the uh, drug therapy is from uh, Ferguson et al. And this is about the risk of suicide. So there are cases, there was a lot of cases, I think especially, I remember it being um, in the news um, sort of Siroxat and Prozac particularly, adolescents who'd been taken it in America and they found that a lot of them were committing suicide. Um, so Ferguson found that if adolescents took the antidepressants, the SSRIs, then they were twice as likely to attempt suicide than those who hadn't. However, Barbui et al. Um, identified that SSRIs were actually protective against the suicidal attempts um, by older people, especially people aged 65 and over. It was actually protective for them. So, um, the next therapy we're going to look at, so we've looked at drug therapy, and the next therapy is electroconvulsive therapy, and we call that ECT. So the the out, we're going to outline what it means. And so the National Institute for Clinical Excellence, abbreviated to NICE, um, suggests that ECT should only be used in cases where all the other treatments have failed. So psychotherapy, drug therapy, everything else has been tried, all the medication and therapy, or um, if, the if the condition is life-threatening, so if somebody is suicidal and they are definitely going to commit suicide but they haven't had any treatment before, then they would recommend ECT in this case because it is such a severe condition, um, so they would recommend it then. So you can see that ECT is used for people who are severely depressed, who have severe depression and are at risk of um, suicide and where everything else has failed. The procedure for ECT is, um, I want you to watch the video again that we watched in class. I'm going to put a link to it in the description, which should be below this video. Um, it's that video we watched, it's about 13 minutes, and it shows people having ECT. So you can see that it's in really clinical conditions. It's, you know, it's not barbaric like it was, well, that's a matter of opinion, um, but it's not done um, in, like, forcibly on people anymore, apparently. Um, but it's done in a hospital in a very calm clinical environment. Um, the person that you'll see in that video, he just, you know, he gets on the bed and they chat to him. So he's given an injection of a short acting general anaesthetic. So whoever has it is unconscious. They're not conscious while they have the electricity pass through their the electric current pass through their brain. Then they have a nerve blocking agent put into them, a barbiturate. And that is to prevent fractures because when they have the uh, electrical current, it causes their body to tense up. You'll see it in the video, and um, it can actually cause fractures in the body. So they have to have this barbiturate put into their bloodstream. So then they also need oxygen because um, this compensates for their inability to breathe. And then a small electric current is passed through the brain, about 0.6 amps, lasting half a second, and that causes a seizure. And they think it's the seizure, not the actual electrical current, but the seizure that it causes that um, uh, actually treats the depression. That's the theory. So um, in the, the patient receives between 3 and 15 treatments, 
but the video that you've seen shows other experimental conditions where people have like a monthly top up of ECT and that happens in certain parts of the country. And the other procedure part that you need to know obviously is the unilateral and bilateral um, uh, procedure. So um, you can see from the slide from the, from the picture that unilateral involves the electrode being placed on the temple or just above the temple and on the, in the middle of the forehead whereas bilateral is either side of the brain um, so uh, an electrode is placed above each temple. So that's your AO1, that's your outline of what ECT is and then you obviously need to evaluate that. So uh, the effectiveness of ECT, there's research for it and research against it and research for it, it comes from Gregory et al, 1985, who found that ECT compared to sham ECT was more effective. Um, so this means the person, the sham ECT means the person was anaesthetized, they did all the procedures except put the electrical current through their brain. So they wouldn't have known which group they were in, ECT or sham ECT. And they found, Gregory et al found, that uh, it was the real ECT where people showed a difference. So that is evidence for it. Um, <laughs> a way to remember Gregory et al is, I, <laughs> I've been kind of singing it to the tune of Summertime and the Living is Easy, and it goes, Gregory, I'm not gonna sing it, it's horrendous too cringy but you sing it like look at the words and sing it with that 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 tune in your head it'll be fine um some more evidence for it is from Falkertz who found that ECT was effective in cases of treatment resistant depression so when they tried lots of other things then and that hadn't worked psychotherapy maybe and CBT or uh, drug therapy then ECT was effective and then we've got recent research against it. So we've got Hussein found no difference in response to um, ECT in treatment resistant depression. So he found that there was no evidence for it. Um, they always contradict each other. And Sackheim et al found that 85% of patients relapse within six months. So they're saying it's not a long term solution for depression. Um, and then Scott looked at Scott 2004 looked at ECT versus um, antidepressant medication. So he did a meta-analysis of 18 studies with 1144 patients uh, comparing ECT with drug therapy and found that ECT was more effective than drug therapy in the short term. So there's a kind of theme here, isn't there, like that ECT isn't working long term, but actually if you've got short term really desperate problems, then ECT can be effective. However, in Scott's study, none of the studies compared ECT with newer antidepressants such as SSRIs. Um, and then another evaluation point is, the, is ECT appropriate? And we're looking at the side effects. So in that video that I've shown you, there was that woman called Helen Crane who talked about her memory loss. Um, so make sure you watch that video so you can really understand the side effects. Rose et al. did a meta-analysis and found that a third of patients complained of persistent memory loss like um, Helen Crane did in that video. Um, DATO 2000 identified physical side effects such as impaired memory, cardiovascular changes and headaches. The Department of Health report 1999 found that 30% of people who, who'd had it found that it resulted in permanent fear and anxiety. Um, and Wiener, hilarious name, uh, Mr. Wiener or Miss Wiener found a general slowing of cognition following ECT that takes weeks to disappear. So uh, wh what that means is the slowing of cognition, they can't think as quickly, uh, they can't process their thoughts as quickly. However, Sackheim et al found that the unilateral rather than bilateral ECT was less likely to cause these cognitive effects and might be just as effective. So that's kind of everything you need for this 24 marker. So I'd really encourage you to watch that video, it's down there in the description. Um, try writing this essay out for yourself um, and just practice it because your exam is next week, unless you're watching this after the 16th of June, in which case it's just, it's just some information for you. <laughs> okay.